We are facing global climate change, but it's the Milankovitch cycle's fault. In this video, you will learn what this mysterious process is all about, why it has been determining the fate of the planet since time immemorial, and when we can expect this climate change. So be sure to stay tuned until the end, and if you like it, I'd be thrilled to receive a thumbs up and a comment. Thank you guys, and welcome. Are you more of a summer or winter person? Let me know in the comments. I like both. In the summer, I'm always in Sicily for several months and in the winter in Norway. But it could well be that soon, even in the summer, I'll be cold in southern Italy because the winter is coming. The reason for the next ice age are the so-called Milankovic cycles. To understand this, let's first quickly clarify how the seasons we are accustomed to actually come about. The Earth rotates on its orbit around the Sun. However, its axis is not completely perpendicular to this orbit, it is tilted, and at just under 23.5 degrees. This means that one part of the Earth is tilted towards the Sun, and the other part is tilted away from it. The seasons arise from the sunlight's different angles of incidence. And that also explains why there are no pronounced seasonal differences in the equatorial region, because here, the sunlight always falls evenly. In most depictions, it is limited to this movement of our Earth around the Sun. But that is highly incomplete, because in our solar system, there are many more celestial bodies, and they all interact with each other to a greater or lesser extent. Although the Sun makes up 99% of the mass of the solar system, and is therefore definitely the strongest gravitational influence, the gravity of the other objects also affects us, just as not only the Earth attracts you, but you also attract the Earth. However, if you noticeably attract the Earth, then it is slowly time for a diet. To cut a long story short, many other objects also influence the Earth. The Moon, of course, but also Jupiter, the heaviest planet, Saturn, and, to a much lesser extent, the other planets. Our solar system is a finely tuned system in itself, like a kind of cosmic clockwork, all pulling and tugging at each other, and this has an effect on our Earth. More specifically, on the inclination of the Earth's axis, on the exact shape of the orbit, and on the ecliptic plane, the plane of the planet's orbit. All these factors are subject to complicated but regular cycles due to physical influences within the solar system, and these are the Milankovic cycles. The first to recognize this was the Serbian mathematician and geoscientist Milotin Milankovic in the 1920s. So we are talking here about several astronomical cycles that have a massive influence on our planet and climate. And despite their immense importance, the average person has probably never heard of the Milankovitch cycles. But we will change that now and take a look at the most important ones. Perhaps the most important Milankovitch cycle is the elliptical cycle. Over a period of 100,000 years, the Earth's orbit around the Sun becomes more elliptical at times and less elliptical at others. Logically, the less elliptical the orbit, the more constant the temperature on Earth. When the orbit becomes egg-shaped, there are severe temperature fluctuations and the maximum temperatures in both directions become more extreme. It seems a bit confusing, but the Earth reaches its closest point to the Sun, the so-called perihelion, on January 3rd, the most distant point from the Sun, the aphelion, on July 4th. So, during the Northern Hemisphere winter, the Earth is closest to the Sun, which makes our winter a bit more pleasant and our summer a bit milder than they would otherwise be. In the Southern Hemisphere, the opposite is the case. Summers tend to be particularly hot and winters tend to be particularly cold. And that's despite the fact that we are currently living in a rather circular phase of the elliptical Milankovitch cycle. If the Earth's orbit becomes more elliptical over the next 10,000 years, these seasonal trends will intensify and winter and summer in the Southern Hemisphere will reach much more extreme levels, while in the Northern Hemisphere, summers will become even milder and winters even more pleasant. So we in the Northern Hemisphere are absolute profiteers of the elliptical Milankovitch cycle. Sorry, dear kangaroos, but it's not that simple, because there are more Milankovitch cycles, for example, the precession cycle, which influences our Earth's axis. We have already established that the Earth's axis is tilted at 23.5 degrees, and that this is how the seasons arise. Easy, except that the Earth's axis moves. 
Here at the planetarium, we have a great model that illustrates this. As part of the precession cycle, the Earth's axis performs a kind of circular motion that takes 26,000 years. That's why Polaris is not always the pole star. A few thousand years ago, the Earth's axis pointed somewhere else. So not only do we have a northern hemisphere privilege, we also have a pole star privilege because we live exactly in the time when the Earth's axis points to this star. Incidentally, only from the northern hemisphere. But don't rest on your privilege, because the precession cycle will reverse the Earth's tilt behavior. In just under 13,000 years, we will have summer in January, and Australia will finally be able to celebrate a white Christmas in December. And then we will be the ones affected by the more extreme seasons due to the elliptical cycle. Say what you will about the Milankovitch cycles, but they are fair. There are tons of other Milankovitch cycles, some less consequential, some more. And the interplay of all these cycles leads to something that is as strange as it is frightening. Ice ages. That's when it's time for ice cream, right? Hmm, ice age. Some of the Milankovitch cycles perfectly match the timing of ice ages in Earth's history. For example, a cycle in which the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun rises and falls relative to the Sun's equator over the course of 100,000 years. Exactly how this can trigger ice ages is not yet fully understood, but it fits so perfectly in terms of timing that scientists are convinced there is a connection. One theory is that the Earth moves through a cosmic layer of dust on its steeper orbit around the Sun, which blocks some of the sunlight and thus leads to significantly lower average temperatures. This means that it is only a matter of time before the Earth changes its orbital plane as part of this Milankovitch cycle, average temperatures drop, and an ice age awaits us. Some of you might object. The evidence is very thin, but I want an ice age and to see mammoths. This is where the last Milankovitch cycle comes into play, and it will very likely bring us the Ice Age. I am talking about the Axial Cycle. We have just heard that the Precession Cycle causes the Earth's axis to move in a circular pattern. The Axial Cycle causes the angle of inclination to change. The 23.5 degrees we heard about just now are not set in stone. During the Axial Milanovitch Cycle, which lasts 41,000 years, the inclination angle of the Earth's axis varies between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees. We are currently in the part of the cycle in which the inclination angle is decreasing. But shouldn't that then lead to the seasons becoming less extreme and move away from an ice age? No. Because with a lower inclination of the Earth's axis, the summers become milder. After all, no part of the Earth now points more extremely towards the sun. The winter ice then hardly thaws at all in summer and becomes a permanent part of the landscape. The result, huge parts of the Earth become frozen. The more that is on the Earth's surface, the more sunlight is no longer absorbed but reflected back into space, a self-reinforcing process that then leads to an ice age, a snowball system in the truest sense of the word. We are currently living in a short, warm period. This is also called the Holocene Interglacial, a brief period of mild climate that began almost 12,000 years ago. So this is a brief anomaly within a larger ice age, and thanks to the Milankovitch cycles, this anomaly will eventually come to an end, and the ice age that is actually prevailing right now will take over again. I repeat myself, but... But winter is coming. That could still take several millennia, which of course is not long at all from a geological and cosmic point of view. And of course, we have to consider that human activities are known to have an impact on the climate. And as far as the relationship between the anthropogenic greenhouse effect and the Milankovitch cycles is concerned, we are still at the very beginning of research. I find this topic incredibly fascinating, and it shows once again how much our lives are determined by space and how little we know about it. About as little as we know about the interior of our planet, the Earth's core. It influences the global climate and the Earth's magnetic field, which protects us from space. And researchers have now made a shocking discovery. The inner core of the Earth has suddenly stopped moving and is now slowly rotating in the other direction. You can find out how this could happen and whether we need to worry in the video below, so be sure to click on it. And if you want to support the channel, then feel free to browse through my space shop where you can find the shirts from the videos and real meteorites. Every purchase supports my work. Otherwise, I'd say, see you in the next video. Take care, folks.